So you might be limiting your spending because you're focused on achieving a big savings goal or a debt payoff goal. However, cutting out fun money from your budget may actually do more harm than good. And so in this video, we're going to talk about how to make room for fun money in your budget and why you should. Do you currently have room for fun money in your budget? I would love to know. Share in the comments below. Hey everyone, my name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. I'm also the author of the Clever Girl Finance book series and the new book, Choosing to Prosper. Welcome to Clever Girl Finance TV. So let's talk about why you need to have fun money in your budget. Why is it a good idea for you to have fun money in your budget? Well, fun money is basically the money you set aside to do the things that bring you joy, right? It could be going to a restaurant with friends, having an experience with family, uh, shopping, getting your hair done, getting your nails done, whatever that thing is that brings you joy. That's essentially what this money is for. And you have it as fun money in your budget so that you can spend it guilt free without feeling bad about putting money towards doing things that bring you joy, which you shouldn't feel bad about in the first place. Whatever it is that you choose to use your fund money for is personal to you, but it also should be planned within reason of your budget. So you do not want to have a fund money account that totally derails your goals, your savings goals, your investment goals, your debt payoff goals, your business goals, etc. This is essentially something that you build as a line item into your budget that's not impacting the other goals that you're trying to achieve, but helps you stay on track and motivated to achieve your goals because you're doing something good for yourself every month. So you might find yourself feeling hesitant about saving fun money because you might feel guilty. But like I said earlier, not having that little bit of fun money in your budget can actually do more harm than good. And here are a few reasons why. Number one, over restricting yourself, not allowing yourself to spend any money at all on yourself can actually lead to overspending. And basically what happens is that, or what happens to a lot of people is that they restrict themselves so much where they don't allow themselves to do anything nice for themselves. And then they get to a point where they have a bad day, they go through an emotional period, and then they end up impulse or emotional shopping and then completely blowing their budget because they never gave themselves any breathing room to just spend a little bit on themselves. So over, over restriction can lead to overspending. Also restriction can create a poor money mindset. When you're so focused on not letting yourself do anything, your mind is also focused on what you don't have and can be focused on scarcity, right? You're not able to do this because you don't have this. You're trying to pay off debt and so you can't spend a single dime because because if you spend that money, you're never going to be able to pay off your debt. And that is focusing on scarcity versus focusing on the abundance, right? You allow yourself to do something nice for yourself so you can stay motivated within reason. That's the key word here within reason, uh, so that you can achieve your goals, right? So I'm going to get my nails done because I've worked so hard all month and I have been able to make extra payments on my debt and I'll be able to do that again next month. That's an abundant way of thinking. So another reason why it's important to have fun money is because when you over restrict yourself, it can also lead you to having that scarcity or negative mindset about money. Restriction can also cause you to lose motivation on your goals. If you feel like all you're doing is working to pay off debt, all you're doing is working to pay bills, then it's hard to be motivated to, to feel like you know, you have anything else going for yourself, right? If you feel like every single dollar you earn has to go towards, you know, bills, 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 then you're not going to be motivated just across your life in general. And so when you give yourself a little bit of room to be happy, you're excited to do the work. You're excited to go to work. You're excited to work in your business, to earn money, to achieve your goals, to achieve your investment goals, your savings goals, to pay down debt. You have that motivation to keep going and you won't give up easily, even when things get difficult. So it's really important important to pace yourself when it comes to, you know, achieving money goals, especially things around debt, because it can take a long time to pay off amounts of debt, right? Especially if you have a lot of debt or high interest debt. And so giving yourself that breathing room will help you stay motivated on that journey to continue to make those extra payments and find ways to get uh, creative to get out of debt quicker. 
And being overly restrictive can also cause money fights if you're in a relationship, right? So money is the number one reason for divorce in the US. And if you're in a space where, or in a relationship where one partner is so restrictive, the other person can feel resentful because they feel like they're not able to enjoy life because this other partner is being so, so restrictive and it can lead to money fights and money arguments because one of you might be feeling that the other person is not making time for fun, right? And sometimes spending a little bit of money could be you guys going out to eat, going to see a movie, stepping outside of your usual space at home to do something different. Of course, there are many free things that you can do, but also being able to go out and, you know, grab a coffee together, you know, can help you have great conversations for your relationship as opposed to being angry uh, angry with each other that you can't even spend a single dollar because someone is trying to save or pay off debt. So I hope you are enjoying this video so far. If you are, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, tell your best girlfriends about Clever Girl Finance, and stop by clevergirlfinance.com. We have over 30 plus completely free courses to help you on your journey to financial wellness, and we update our blog every single day with great content. And you should also sign up for our weekly newsletter. We share a ton of great content to keep you motivated and inspired on your financial journey as well. Okay, let's get back to the video. So I've talked about why it's important to have fun money in your budget, the issues that not having fun money can cause, but actually building fun money into your budget is sometimes a little easier said than done. So let's go over some strategies to help you accommodate fun money in your existing budget. So one method you can leverage to build uh, fun money into your budget is the 50-30-20 budgeting method. This is where 50% of your income goes towards your needs, your essentials, 30% goes towards your wants, and 20% goes towards your savings and debt payoff. And what you can do is build your fun money into that 30% for your wants. Keep in mind that the 50, 30, 20 budgeting method, that percentage breakout is just one of several. If you want to save more money, then you can adjust the 50 and 30%. So you have more of a percentage to put in that, what is the 20% category. But again, when it comes to fun money, you want to build it into that wants category, which is 30%. And then based on your overall expenses around, you know, that wants category, you can determine what the exact dollar amount it is that you can build into your budget for having fun. Another budgeting method that you can leverage for fun money is the zero based budgeting method. And this is basically where you give every single dollar you earn a job to do. So you're budgeting your money down to zero. And this includes saving, investing, paying off debt, paying your bills, and also fun. So based on your total income, determine exactly how much in your zero based budget you're going to put towards fun. And that is going to be guilt free money you can use on just doing things that bring you joy. Another approach is paying yourself first, right? This is when as soon as you get paid, money goes towards your savings accounts, towards your investment accounts, and the rest of the income is towards your bills and expenses and towards fun. And one budgeting approach that works really well for this paying yourself first approach is the 80-20 budgeting method, where 20% of your money immediately goes towards savings and then you're living off the 80%. And so in that 80% category, you want to build in a little bit of fun money that you can spend guilt-free. One thing to remember is that everybody's budget is different when it comes to how much they allocate for fun money. Some people are able to afford allocating 10% of their income to fun money. Some people can only allocate one, two, three, four, or even 5%. So go at your own pace, go at what makes sense for you. You may not be able to do all the fun things you want to do because you're trying to achieve your goals, but just having that little bit of money, that little bit of money to do something nice, something small, can be just the, the little motivation you need to keep going, especially when things get difficult. And even if you have a really small fun money budget, you can combine that with the countless free things that you can do to have a great time with your friends and family each month. So for example, you can save on fun money by finding free community festivals to attend, by hosting a potluck instead of going out to dinner with friends, uh, by planning a movie night instead of going to the movie theater, by planning a family games night at home, 
by doing outdoor activities like hiking, kayaking, or camping, and by attending free local meet meetups based on your interests in your community. So there are a number of different ways in which you can leverage free activities and combine them with a small budget as it relates to fun money. So in closing, you know, setting aside a little bit of fun money can be really beneficial to your relationships, to your mental health, to your emotional well-being, uh, because you're able to do things that bring you joy, as I keep saying, and do those things with people that you care about too. So I'm a huge fan of having fun money in your budget within reason while you're pursuing your goals just to stay motivated, to stay inspired, and to feel happy about living life. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment, and tell me how you are planning to save fun money, if you save fun money, and how you feel about having that fun money. And please stop by clevergirlfinance.com. We have over 30 30 plus completely free courses to help you on your journey to financial wellness and we update the blog every single day. Thank you so much for being here.